It's showtime. BS and B Media, in association with S T W F TV, the podcasting network. Introducing the best in the world. Oh yeah! What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the show. Best in the world. Hashtag B-I-T-W. I am Dale. With me today, my guy Trell. What's up, man? Yeah, what's up, Dale? How we doing today on this Thursday afternoon? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, doing good, man. Um, I'm ready to talk about this Mr. McMahon uh, docuseries. Uh, we saw on Netflix, um, really, really interesting series. It was definitely hard to put down an easy watch. Um, <laughs> finished that yeah. sucker pretty quickly. So, um, so yeah, man, I, um, can't wait to, you know, talk about this, man, get this thing all tweeted out and everything. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been dying to, uh get my thoughts on it and uh did the um, the hot the too much of a high expectation i accidentally gave myself without realizing you know the time frame of the documentary so mm -hmm. yeah yeah um you know i mean everything happened when it, when it happened and that's just it's just the way it happened but look a big big picture thing man i didn't think we would see an actual documentary on on mr mcmahon until vince actually died um i never thought we would we would get one because he he does not want to talk about himself and everything like that and you you kind of saw that in the documentary but it i, I think that's kind of funny i guess for um people in in show business not to want to talk about themselves the real them Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I, I feel like in his case, the way he kept saying he didn't like he didn't like to talk about himself, which I get it. Um, they, he's always been that way, even at Hall of Fames and stuff. He always made it a rule to give your thanks, but don't ever thank me. Right. You know, yes. like yes. you know, keep my name out of it. Um, yes. I get all that. So it's he. I don't know. He's more about everyone else than himself. But there was something he had joked around about. He was like, you know, he was like, oh, the stories I can tell you. And the, the guy was like, oh, what kind of stories? Oh, I right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, he just said, I don't want people to know that about me. I'm like, I was like, really, Vince? Well, what is it that we don't, you don't want us to know, huh? <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, look, was that, there, that, was anything could be quick? in his mind. You never know what's, what's in his mind. So um, yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to be of a sexual nature and everything. But um, I, I think I think the, the series did make it um, a point to kind of put those little clips like that in there just to, I don't know, it, with the pending case, it starts making you kind of think, oh, he... He does have some kind of sexual problem, and you know, he maybe he was sort of like this Mr. McMahon character. He says he wasn't like. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just it's just a bunch of different things to get you thinking, man. That, that's really it. Oh yeah. So. <laughs> most, What's up, most John? Definitely. Most definitely, because I'm like, wait, why? Like, what, what? Right. Because he's the only one that says him and Mr. McMahon not the same. Everybody else says otherwise. Yes, yes, that's true. That is true. That is true. That is absolutely true. So um that's a that's a that's another good point there. Um so okay, let's 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 talk uh let's talk about the documentary, man. Uh get into it. Um so yeah, we, we both agree it was easy watch. We we can we went right through it. Um how did how did you 
what did you think about the i mean a lot of stuff we we, we saw and we we knew about because we're wrestling fans we, we've seen these things right so a lot of it was um you know kind of telling you the the story of how wwe came to be and and everything like that um give me something that may have uh come as a surprise to your story that you hadn't hadn't seen before Oh, yeah. Um, I kind of knew about the whole background of, you know, growing up dirt poor, not dirt poor, but, you know, growing up, you know, struggling, stuff like that. But what I didn't know and shocked me was how he yearned for his father's respect. He yearned yeah. for his father's love. Mm hmm. Never been told he loved, he was loved. Never told him he loved them until before he literally, before he died, he told me he loved them. Um, and how much of a satisfied moment that was for him. I didn't know that. Um, so pretty much he's basically just like his father. So I, I was taken aback by that. I was a little bit uh, surprised. And also I knew that his father um agreed to let Vince make payments and if you skip the payments he doesn't get the company or whatever. But um I'm wondering did he really show some tough love to make him earn it or he really didn't you know give him any chance of you know succeeding so to mm -hmm. speak. Uh but I thought that um him you know wanting his father's attention that that was a surpriser. And another surpriser, which I had it backwards, was his parents. Or because okay. when he was when he I always heard the stories of him being abused by his stepfather. I thought he was sexually abused by his stepfather. I didn't know he was sexually abused by his mother. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was that was also a shock. Um Honestly, for me, I didn't I didn't know much about his his upbringing at all. So all of that was news to me. Um, him, you know, being estranged from his father, getting beat up by a stepfather, all of that was news to me. I, I had no idea about any of that. And then I, I didn't I didn't know he was dirt poor, and you know that that kind of um, that kind of surprised me. Cause I thought, you know, he had a, a normal relationship with his dad mm -hmm. and um, I thought they, they came up with, you know, means and, uh, and all that stuff. And, and then his dad became a, a, a businessman and stuff. That's, that's how I thought it went. So yeah. yeah, I didn't, I didn't know much about that at all. Me too. Who, who wouldn't, who would have thought that Linda was the one that had the better family income than him when, when they met. So. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, he was the bad boy type of guy, you know, from from the mm -hmm. from the, I guess from the streets of Connecticut. I don't know where he well, it was they came from like a not a farm, but <laughs> at uh, least the posse was based off of him. <laughs> can you imagine. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So for him for him to finally meet his dad and want to learn the family business. Well, not gonna say the family business, his dad's business. I like that's where he found that that connection yeah. that you know that common ground so to speak but he had to earn the stripes and man when he when he took the company from his dad and he went against what his dad did I thought I thought you know because everyone always complained like, you know you're nothing like your father your father did it this way you did it the other way and you know it was frowned upon but for him to say tell that story that his dad was like eh fuck him <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know, like yeah hey <laughs> you're doing a good yeah. job so i was like oh so he did get that 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 you know the attaboy that, that boy. Yes. <laughs> yes so i thought that was cool yeah and i mean that that's interesting in the fact that you know, I, I think that as a um, a male, you know, with the dad, like you're always wanting that approval, and it it showed, you know, Mr. McMahon is no different. 
you know, Shane McMahon was no different. You know, we we've all got that um that yearn for that that approval from my father. So um yeah, that that's what that's what I got from that, man. And that it, it brings it brings him uh humanity to the guy. You know, he, he's he's a human just like the rest of us. So um so the of course we, we knew about the 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 history, how WrestleMania came to be, how he put everything on the line to try to make it happen. Um that was that was really good getting the different point of views from it. Uh like guys like Tony Atlas, um, you know, old, old guys in the business. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I like getting his point of view. Who who was one of your favorite uh interviews in the in a in the series here? Oh man. So I really I really like Tony Atlas. Um just kind of just he, yeah, he, 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 he's I'm, not afraid of nobody. Tony. He's just he's just Tony splitting Tony. it all out. <laughs> yeah, I would say Tony because he told it like it is and he didn't yeah. He didn't shoot code. It is. It, it it never seemed like he was, you know, dodging a question, or he, he was trying to protect Vince in any capacity. Nor did it show he was trying to bury Vince either. So, he he told it like it was because when the um, well, I'm pretty sure probably get into the whole Pat Patterson all this stuff later, but. The, uh, when he had told that story, and the guy was like, "Are you gonna complain?" He was like, "To who?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a trip. I mean, like you know, hey, Pat Patterson not here to defend himself, but um, to to I mean, look, we knew that you know Pat Patterson was, was an openly gay guy, but to think he would be—I didn't know that until oh really? They had okay. they had that. Uh, that reality show Legends House. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. When he yeah, when he about. I thought that was his coming out party. But okay. when I think about it, all through those years, I saw always seen with the little shorts and the colorful shirts. I was like, as a kid, I'm like, so off about him. But I was like, eh. <laughs> I, I just figured that's just how white guy, old white guys dress, you know. Okay. So I didn't okay. I didn't pay it any mind until after he was dead and gone, I started hearing stories. I'm like, whoa, mm-hmm. really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, I but would... he he definitely had um had um things he had he had he had clout in the company, right? So you definitely couldn't just um you know couldn't just do something about it back in those days, of course. Right. Yeah. We, we, we've heard the, the stories about women being uh, sexually harassed in the workplace. So it's not far to think if, if you know, if there's a gay guy that's in, in control, you know, that's just the way things were. And he got things done that way. But they're they're big guys. Like Tony Atlas was a, a big guy. <laughs> and to think you are yeah. going to go there and just, you know, sexually harass him like that. Like, oh, wow. Like you, you really using your power as a boss over him at that point. So, yeah, he was he was Vince's right hand man. So it's like, who you who you gonna who you, who, right? Who you gonna call? You know what I'm saying? They, there's yeah, no exactly. HR. He was HR. Exactly. Um, the the timing also of the um, the killing of Vince McMahon character, the exploding uh, limo. So. Mm-hmm. I I remembered it as that happened and then 9-11 happened. And that's the way I remembered it. Um, but I was I was mistaken because that was when Chris Benoit had the murder suicide of his family and stuff like that. Um yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, the, the, yeah. This stuff was also uh really really ridiculous too. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, um, that Miss Mc, Mr. McMahon death thing, I was like, because I was literally like, oh, shit. Like, yes. I mean, I'm going to say I knew he didn't die, but I was like, oh, this is dope. And then when that happened, it's like, you know, that forced his hand. He has to come out on camera. And, you know, I'm like, well, there goes that. You know, it was just one of those storylines that needed to end. But right. it sucked that it got scrapped in that way. 
Yeah. yeah. So, but the thing I couldn't take away from I that I could understand was how his Eddie Guerrero's death. They try to tie that to him, like it was mm. his fault. And I'm like sitting there watching this. I'm like, I've read Eddie Guerrero's biography mm-hmm. about his life. He was having drug problems and alcohol problems way before he even got into that company. Way when he was in WCW, he was having those those issues. So it's like yeah. his death, Tess's death, and then there was someone else's like Miss Elizabeth Miss Elizabeth's death, which I'm like. Why is her picture even there? She wasn't even in the company by the time she died. <laughs> right. When she was right. in her early, later years in life, she was in WCW. So it's like, yeah. why yeah. is this in his documentary? Like he's like they're trying to blame him. It's like some of those people that died, it's like that wasn't even that one, it wasn't even under his watch. Mm-hmm. And two, it's like, how's that his fault? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. They, they they wanted to blame pretty much every uh, every wrestler's death on them and stuff, but um, Vince Vince does you know go out and help um, the wrestlers paying for rehab, uh, different things like that. That's that's definitely you know hats off to them for helping out that way because the company yeah. does not have to do that. Um, right. This was a trip. The the whole um, the whole stuff about Stephanie um, in in the wrestling business. She does some 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 weird things, especially if this is your daughter. You're telling your daughter to do this kind of stuff. <laughs> A whole marriage um, storyline, weird, 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 creepy, yeah. cringy right now. But it was it was yeah. just entertainment back then. <laughs> I mean, well, the marriage storyline was pretty cool because you know she supposedly marrying the lover the love of her life and. Here comes a douchebag that secretly married her. I thought that was good storytelling. I thought yeah, that was cool because exactly. you never big ups to Triple H for that idea. Because yes, I didn't know how if that didn't happen. I don't know how that story would have came. It would have just been like a wedding, and then what? What, what would have been the payoff? Yeah. So yeah. there's always a payoff with a wrestling wedding. <laughs> yeah. So to have him. Swoop in and you know, which I thought was comical, you know, pretending to be her and all that stuff. That 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 was that was pure gold. So for that for that to have that payoff and wind up having her join him in the end, I thought that was sure masterpiece. That's one of the storylines he had her do. I was cool with um having her sacrifice. I thought that was like kind of weird. But the one storyline that he had that I'm glad did not make it to air was the one where he, you know, he becomes the father of her child. I'm like, yes, that's way too crazy. How can you pull that off knowing everyone knows that's your daughter? Yes. And so when he told the story about the whole incest situation with his mom, I'm like, all right, that makes sense. That psychological shit carried on. And then later on in life, he just had some weird idea of, hey, let me be the father of my kids, my kids' kids. So it's it's still nasty and weird and you know disgusting, but yes, sir. It makes sense where he got it from, you know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um this one when they when they were showing um they were talking about CTE brain damage and everything like that with mm-hmm. wrestling and they showed uh Chris Benoit after you know he uh, committed the murders and everything like that right um they start showing him doing flying headbutts and all this kind of stuff saying hey let's just this is where he um you know he knocked his 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 noggin loose and all this kind of stuff yeah. and like you this is all the work bro like he's not really using headbutt you know <laughs> in a ring like this <laughs> Right. And and it's like, again, I'm like, again, I'm not um, saying Vince McMahon is, you know, 100% good guy. But at the same time, it's like they was throwing anything and everything at him. And given the history of these people coming out of all these years and way back then, 
uh, from the steroid scandal, ever since the steroid scandal with him and Hulk and everybody else, they've always came to him. There's so many other wrestling country, I mean, other wrestling companies out there in the world. ECW, for one, who took nastier chair shots all the time. No one calls Paul Heyman. WCW always had, you know, wrestlers in their company. No one called Eric Bischoff to talk to him about CTE. So, and Bret Hart's career ended in WCW, not WWE. So, you know what I'm saying? So, to make it seem like he's responsible for the CTE, it is like, he's not, he's not the bad guy in that. He's not wrong in that, you know. But um, to late to label that for him. And then they just um, going on about Benoit's death because of steroids. And it's like, there's been a few people in an interview that were saying, I think it was Brett was like, I never known steroids to, you know, cause, cause someone like to cause CTE or cause someone to, you know, do that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think it was more of that, you know, these are, you know, WWE wrestlers that just blame Vince. Not Absolutely. forgetting that these guys had careers long before they went to WWE. Yeah. So it's like, come on now. This was this was also shocking to me. Um, getting the interview from Stone Cold Steve Austin in regards to CTE, and Stone Cold was like, I'm just not a, a believer in that kind of thing. I'm like, what? Stone Cold, no. <laughs> He's an old school guy, you know. And I, if I'm gonna play advocate to that, I think what he's saying is because usually when CTEs or concussions happen, it's usually because of a mishap, or you know, you deliberately take a chair shot to the face or whatever. But I think. I understood what he's saying, but I think how he came off by saying it, you know, it, it made him look bad a little bit. But again, he's he's an old school guy from from back in the day, old school mentality. So he's one of the ones that don't, you know, believe in, you know, CTEs unless, you know, you not doing something right. I mean I guess for an example, so you can look at Sammy Guevara as, as an example for that, but that's a different story for a different day. Um, but, I mean, I don't have a problem with what he said. I can understand how the backlash of how he said it is like, that, that sounds yeah. a little insensitive, uh, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's up, Will? Um, we're, we're talking about um, the Stone Cold Steve Austin part of the documentary where can't hear you. Um, uh oh, What's going on, fellas? What's up? Uh -oh. can, all right, can can we, uh -oh. everybody hear me now? Yo, Jay Smart, like your audio and your video is not matching. <laughs> it it was like that for a second. Yeah. All right. So um, we're talking about um, McMahon uh, documentary, and yeah, we just brought up a part where Stone Cold uh, said he didn't believe in CTE. Okay, yeah. Um, did, did that part uh, pretty much exp uh, surprise you as much as it did me? Yeah, I saw that. That was actually one of the... <laughs> I saw that you were live, but um, that's one of the reasons I jumped on. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, "Oh, here we go." They got me talking. <laughs> it, it didn't surprise me because it was Austin and uh -huh. just a full blown Texan. I expected that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but I but I will say that like, yeah, he um. Yeah, he, he needs to relax, probably, cause, like, <laughs> cause like that's he's just he's towing the company line. That's all he's really doing there. Mm -hmm. But he's doing that because, like, obviously he rocks with McMahon still. 
made him mm-hmm. the biggest star ever. So like, even though he really was self made by the decisions he made with the promos, but um, yeah, I, I just think he was towing the company line there. Okay. I think I think uh, if he if he buys in to the CTE thing, then it becomes real, and then everybody in the whole league has to address this now. Yeah. And we've yep. already taken out chair shots, which is pissed the Undertaker off. Yeah, you know I mean, but yes, yes I, exactly. I just feel like he was like, "Yo, I'm not gonna mess anything up for the for the wrestlers behind me that like mm-hmm. I wouldn't have wanted messed up for me." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. So going uh, a little bit further in the uh, in the series, um, we start talking about the the behind the scenes deal about the Montreal screw job. Uh, Bret Hart getting getting uh, screwed because he was going about to go to another company. Um, I didn't realize that Vince could no longer afford to pay Bret Hart the contract that they agreed to. And that's the reason why he was leaving for WCW. I just thought his contract was up and he was leaving for WCW. But to see Bret's, I guess, real life reaction to losing the title and the understanding of it now as a you know wrestling fan it's really a prop and brett didn't want to lose the prop like <laughs> yeah like, yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of those dudes like that though yeah a yeah. lot of them do that <laughs> so uh yeah. will as 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 a, as a non-wrestling fan person t- tell me your thoughts about watching that whole little beef go on <laughs> well that's the thing when that beef was happening like when it was actually, I was a huge fan. I was HBK okay. was my guy. So at the yeah, time yeah. when it was happening, I was a huge fan. So watching the that play out in the documentary, it just mm-hmm. it, it it sucked me right back to that time when I was a kid watching this stuff. So um what I did, I what, what I came to the conclusion was is Brett's just butt hurt because it happened in Canada. That's all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all. Like, like the whole yep. belt thing, like, bro, you you couldn't have possibly thought you were taking that home with you. Like, what what are we doing? You, you exactly. Like, you could. But you wanted me to extend you your contract? Me? Yeah, like what? And even if he kept it, like, what does it mean? Vince would have just got another one made, and just that would be the actual belt. <laughs> now you got a replica. Like, who cares? Like, right? mm-hmm. like, so the real problem was that it was in Canada, which yeah, yeah. Vince is kind of a dickhead for that. Like, he's kind of a he's kind of an ass. He's also an asshole for how he did it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. The timing of but it, he like, had to. really, yeah. But I mean, you could have let him keep going. You could have found some other way, but just randomly, like he kicked out, and we're gonna rush this three count, and it counts yeah, anyway. But, but you got another way, though. Okay. Well, it wasn't the three, the three count. It was it was the tap out. Well, it yeah, wasn't the three count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah that yeah. was a, that was another way because I remember watching a do- another documentary on that years ago. Brett's idea was, look, I don't want to lose in Canada. Let's do this match. Have a fuck finish. Have a fight. You know, break out. You know, double DQ. And I will drop it the next night on Raw. Yeah. And then yeah. you can have yeah, your championship. You have your championship. And, you know, I walk away, you know, no harm, no foul. But Vince was like, nah, we need this tonight. So he was because like, his contract right, but, expired. But, but do you blame him though? Like real talk, no, do you blame I him? I don't. Like as an adult, as an adult working in a in you know in the corporate world, I understand yes. that now completely. It's like, hey yes. man, I understand, <laughs> but we need this done now because here's the thing though, you may get Vince once, he'll be damned yes. if he let anyone get him twice. Thank you. A larger blaze you. took that title and Thank ran. You. Thank you. Um, yep. To WCW and threw it in the trash. Yeah. He was like, "That shit will never happen to me again." Nope. That's right. And he made sure not, of it. So not just that. Not that. my. Go ahead, Think about the impact it would have been if it would have been the world title. That's I'm basically that. saying, "Fuck the whole world for whatever, whatever we call World Wrestling Federation." So yeah. you know, I feel, I feel Vince, but. Yeah. It was already planned that it was going to have a ball. Like, it was said in that documentary as well that, you know, Bruce Pritchard said it. He was like, man, we, we were just going to have uh, uh, just a big old battle royal come out, and I don't know why Vince changed it. 
Yeah. But I will say this. He waited till he put him in a sharpshooter. That was cold. Yeah. That was cold blooded. <laughs> So, 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 especially, especially right. Brett telling Sean, "Hey, fool, you doing it the wrong way." You're doing it the wrong way. way. <laughs> he had a school over his way out. That's crazy, exactly. Bro. That's like walking somebody. And then it her. wasn't the <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Then it wasn't the fact that it was he didn't want to lose in Canada. He would have lost in Canada. He just didn't want to lose the HBK. No, oh, he man. was fine. He was fine losing to Sean. He just didn't want to do it in Canada. Yeah, it was the, the Canada. I think was the was the biggest. It was but the Canada say, thing. He didn't want to lose in front of his country. He wanted to wait till Monday Night Raw to lose. Like, if a guy's leaving my company to go join mm -hmm. the the op, like, the there's op. no way of yeah. giving you your send off. Fuck out of here. There's no chance. But, but wait, I, no chance in hell. You've got. <laughs> but, <laughs> but wait, I think <laughs> I think we all getting it confused because you know Vince. Met with Brett and told him the legal way, legal loopholes, how to get yeah. out of his contract, yeah. so he could go yeah, sign with know. WCW. So it wasn't like Brett was just gonna be like, after WC, I mean, after WWF, I'm going to WCW. Yeah. Either way, either way Vince him was, him was not taking that chance. He told him. Yeah. He told him because, but that really is self-serving for for Vince. He's doing that to get out of that contract that he can't afford. Yeah. Right? But then, yeah. like. In, in his mind, Brett, I've made you a superstar. You don't necessarily have to leave, but I can't pay you this anymore. And mm -hmm. right. Brett was like, all right, then I'm out. Right, he was it, it, it was it was mostly about, you know, take take care of his family. That was it. There was no there yep. was no beef, there's no creative issues. Like, hey man, if you can't if you can't pay me, I gotta get paid. No hard feelings. You right. know, right. And it was like, all right, cool, we'll give him my property back. It's like, no, not here, Monday. What you mean Monday? No, give him back. You know what I'm saying? Because he mm -hmm. knew Brett was not gonna do that, and so he was like, "All right, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do." A Sean Earl Triple H. This is what this is what the plan gonna be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Brett yeah, could have took a pay cut if he wanted to. If you wanted, yeah, to he definitely could. If you wanted to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, but WCW yeah, was throwing a biggest. lot of money out there. That's when, fine. It, and it turns it, out that money would have came back around in WWE if he had stuck around. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But during that time, Ted Turner, they he had them. He just he was he was Tony Khan before there was Tony Khan. He had the checkbook. Right. He was like, "How much I you want? It. You well, want to work four days a year? Here you go." That's true. Mm -hmm. How many wrestlers stuck with him, though? There, there was plenty of wrestlers who did stick with Vince, and it worked out. Oh, yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. The whole attitude era. <laughs> right. Everybody yeah. stuck, and it ended up yeah. being great for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just, you know. He could have just stayed. They, they easily could have went under, though. If, 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 oh, if, the, if, yes. the run the, if the inmates did run the asylum in WCW, I don't know if WWE would have survived. <laughs> and see, yeah, and see, Bischoff just didn't write it well. And see, that's yeah. what that that's what Brett didn't like. Brett didn't like the the new edgy stuff. He was a he's a strictly wrestler, technical wrestler. He ain't for all the entertainment. Yeah. So if he would have stayed, WWF would have definitely died. It's WWF. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, he he didn't, didn't, didn't want to leave. It's just yeah, money. Right. He wouldn't have done that. Cause he he said it multiple times. He regrets signing a contract in WCW. Yeah, yeah, because his career died. <laughs> yeah, literally. It did. Hey, literally. The grass always greener. The grass ain't always greener. It's all I'm yeah. saying. Mm -hmm. But it's, you it's lost hard your, not to you lost your brother. Money, yeah. Like it, it just was, man. Yeah. Well, let's lost let's let's, um, let's continue the whole WCW aspect of, of the uh, docu series because. Uh, mm -hmm. Vince Gold have Vince, you know, built WWE from um, pulling the best wrestlers from the different territories um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and basically bring them to the WWE and so they could work for him. And then he reached out into all the different territories and that's where he brought his his wrestling events. So mm -hmm. with, with those for promoters saying hey vince trying to put them out of business um 
Vince said the same thing about WCW taking his best talent, trying to put him out of business. So I got probably, what he meant, though. Yeah, it's I did too. Okay. Okay, well, what, what, what did he same. mean? Because I feel well, like because but I it's, feel like it's what, not. No, it will. I, I feel like what, what Vince was doing at the beginning was, yes, it was for his company, but it's also, he was just breaking the wheel. He got tired of this whole, the lines that were drawn everywhere. You could only go a certain place. He was like, nah, none of that. He's like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go global. That's what I'm going to do. So mm-hmm. if y'all want to join up, by all means, let's go global. But if not, I'm going to run over you. That's not the exactly. same what Bischoff was doing. Bischoff was like, I can't stand McMahon. I'm going to give away all the results to his events. I'm going to steal whoever yep. I can from him. It's a it's, it's a different approach. Like, it was personal for Bischoff. It was never personal mm-hmm. for Bischoff. It's about business every time. Yep. Yeah. Every time. Yes. Yeah. He's like, if, if you can't compete, just get out my way. You know, that, that, exactly. that, was, that was his motto. Oh, come work for and me. Bischoff oh, was like, me. It's whatever. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll hire anyone. Yeah, and Bishop was like, uh, how much you making? Oh, you working that many days? Hey, you want to work 15, 15 a year? Yeah, 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 here you go. You know, screw it, you know. Mm, yep. There's a difference. And it's funny because the way he kept making it seem like he was the victim, he kept saying Ted Turner, but he never addressed Eric That's Bischoff. Right. Oh, he ignored that one time. It would have looked even more worse on Vince if he admits that this little guy who only had a year or so experience in this was beating him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it's easier to go with you know the big juggernaut of Ted Turner and and get that sympathy vote feeling like oh now I'm the small company that's being taken advantage of that's being picked on and blah blah. I'm just looking at him like and he even said it like. Yeah, it was, it was. I did that on purpose, basically. See, I, I just want, I just want the pity. <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah. it was funny. Go ahead, my that shit was hilarious. I'm like, this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, but you gotta give it. You gotta give it to Vince, bro. Vince is a a, a flawless business mind person. Flawless. Yeah. There is yeah. no besides besides he can't keep his his thing in his pants. Yeah. He's a flawless businessman. I mean, yeah. man. Because he's a man. Because he's just <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. Like I, <laughs> like I like I said, you give you give a man that come from that. Well, you give a man money and power. Of course, they're gonna take advantage. You know what I'm saying? That's just the human anatomy. But it's it's just like Vince, man. You came up with this whole. You took put like this. Ted Turner. He didn't even have a deal with USA yet. He was still messing with TNT. Well, Ted, he took Ted Turner in the time. With, huh? Yeah, that, that, that was his network. He started. Yeah, he started yeah. TNT. That was him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he built it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 That, oh, yeah. That yeah. Right? yeah. Crazy. Yeah. That, that was all him. Before any of the things happened, Ted Turner was a big yeah. Like, before right. any of the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And when Ted, when they did the merger, it was over with. Think about it. It's the same thing that's going on now. Same it's exact funny. thing. Yeah, pretty much. What, yeah. What, what was funny is that he, first of all, what was funny, then he was get the vibe. You know how athletes try to like create a problem that isn't there to motivate themselves? Yeah. yeah. I feel like, yeah. I feel like every time he, he brought up Ted Turner, he was like, this is a rivalry. And Ted Turner was like, I don't even, who is this? I don't even, why is he <laughs> 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 what <am I> <laughs> you said, yeah. oh, man. Been too. But I just but thought that was funny. I ain't going to say that. Really I, I, I ain't going to say that because Ted wanted to run Vince out of business. Like, that came out of Ted's mouth himself. He yeah. said, what can we do to get wrestling to to be the main stage to take over uh, WWF? Mm-hmm. You, know, you know why he failed? I don't know. What you say? It was a passion. It was a passion for Vince. It wasn't a passion for Ted. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Good. exactly. I mean, it's clear because he wasn't running the company. You know, you had this guy that had one year or so of experience running a company, and then you just throwing money mm-hmm. <laughs> like AW. But you know, you're not investing in the storylines. You had some of the best wrestlers. 
I ain't even talking about the golden age wrestlers. I'm talking about yeah. Eddie Guerrero. I'm talking about um um uh, what his name is Chris Jericho. Uh, yeah. damn, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of this mass wrestler name. Who the two Guerrero? Like you had the best. La Farca. Oh, they had a bunch you of had dudes. The yeah. best cruiserweight Dean division. Dean Malenko. Perry Saturn. Like you had all these dudes. That's definitely who put the uh the cruiserweight uh on the map, like for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, the Guerreros were the biggest with, with that cruiserweight title. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So it's well, I, was well, I don't know why Bischoff didn't get sure. better writers. Like there was good writers out there that had to be. Yeah, well, he, he, he said he himself lazy with the NWO he got, thing. He got right. too comfortable. But his yeah. best move, his best move was just flipping one of one of uh Vince's best moves. It wasn't even yeah. like his own great move. He yeah. just managed to, yeah. like his his go-to move was like make him a heel. Like that's not even creative. It's just <laughs> you could just flip it's something smart. that smart. We're gonna yeah, two of the coolest guys in wrestling in Ever. And, um and Scott Hall and mm. Kevin Nash. Scott Hall's one of the yep. coolest human beings. The face burn of Hogan, like boom. Yeah. That is man, a lot that, of fire. that moment there, man. I actually believe mm. WWE invaded because obviously there was no internet back then. There was no we right. didn't care about news and rumors. We were just kids. So to see him show up, because I didn't even know about the curtain call incident anyway until in my teenage years. But right. that was live. I didn't have the money for that shit. <laughs> yeah, but uh, when when he showed up, I'm like, "Ooh, what's he doing here?" And then when Nash showed up, I was like, "Yo, what the?" F-? I was bugging yeah. out. I was like, "Ten year old me was losing my mind in the house." I was like, "What am I even seeing right now? This is the whole takeover." And then we find out, like, nah, all them dudes left. They just in WCW. Yeah. <laughs> And, well, I found yeah. out pretty quick when uh, they tried to replace him uh, with the with the fake razor these. I'm like, I'm looking at oh, this. Yeah. I'm like, hold up, nah, that ain't nah. <laughs> There's only one fake. There's only one true fake ever, and it's Gilbert. Yep, <laughs> Gilbert. Gilbert is the best fake ever. The goat. He's the goatest fake. Oh, that dude was funny. Fake, fake that dude was always funny. The, the, nah, the, the fake taker. I, I wasn't. I wasn't a big fan of the fake taker, man. Faker, just call him faker. Well, okay. What about what about fake uh, mini Booker T? No, but I will give you mini Doink. His little Doink crew, Doink's little crew. I'll oh, give okay. You those. Those, okay. Those okay. Okay. <laughs> those were you doing because they were lit. He was throwing them motherfuckers around the ring. <laughs> oh man. Funny, man. So. Uh, um, in in the documentary, um, we, we talked about um, Shane McMahon um, wanting the approval Man. of his dad, and you know we all we all want that as as uh, mm-hmm. males, right? So when they brought him back into the company, mm-hmm. I thought they brought him back into the inner circle as well. But watching this documentary, it let me know otherwise. Um, mm-hmm. Jay, did, did that did that surprise you? When you uh, when you saw the documentary, um, not necessarily, and it's because, as you know, watching it, like I, like watching that part when he came back, it's like okay, the chemistry is not there. Like he's in the inner circle. It's like he's a performer, like he's one of the you know one of the crew. And first of all, I'm, I got to say this before I say anything else, man, that Shane McMahon part. Which was part of the finale, man. That brought a tear to my eye because oh, choked up. I was it's, <laughs> it's you know because I'm the same way. You know what I'm saying? I fight for the approval of my father, so I really feel where he was coming from, and just to, just for him to get that hug, and then I love you, son, and I'm proud of you, yeah. man. That, that I know that meant the world to him. He don't even have to wrestle anymore, do anything else with the company, just because he got that. Yeah, you know, but he wanted but, that chair more than that hug. I know that exactly. <laughs> he wanted that chair but, more than that hug. I promise. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not gonna say that because of you know, I outside of WWE, I'm a huge fan, a Shane fan, mm-hmm. and back when they were supposed to buy UFC, 
Mm-hmm. I kind that's when I kind of started following Shane because I'm like, man, he making some fire, he making some fire business moves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, dude, just nice. And for him, like, I just know he WWE is not for him. When he took that step away, you just could tell that Stephanie. First of all, she got Triple H, one of the greatest creative minds ever. Um, it, it's just no room for him. He just was like, you know, if y'all need me, I do a one off, but. Y'all got the passion more. You could tell he kind of t- gave that to his sister. He in that whole been, little, he in the whole little statue. Scout. Yeah, I agree with that. If he just I... been going all the publications all over America, all over the world, finding the best talent, I think that would have been great for him. I think he would have an eye for it. I guess he just put him in the chair, bro. <laughs> he wanted that chair so bad. Yeah, he he wanted he wanted that UFC. He want to be the owner of the USC because I was watching that doc when I saw the documentary. I like how they, when they explained the difference between Shane and, and Stephanie, mm-hmm. I was like, all right, that that makes sense because you know Shane is the nice guy, too friendly, and he didn't he wouldn't mm-hmm. trust that company in the hands of his son because you know he's the nice one. Steph is literally daddy's little girl and the chip off the old block because. You can tell Stephanie can be, you know, that ruthless, you know, person. So even yeah. with Shane coming back, I always figure it'll be her and Triple H, you mm-hmm. know, taking that company over as opposed to Shane. Because I know Shane, he wanted that same opportunity that his grandfather gave his dad. And it was it is almost the same way. It's like he didn't see it in him. And but his daughter, on the other hand, it's like she's she's literally Vince 2.0 if she, if she really want to be because even mm-hmm. Tony Atlas was like, Yeah, you, you, you can't get over on her, <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> he's like, Yeah, he's like, we were pretty much as scared of her as we were of him. Like, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah, I got a question for y'all though. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know if y'all if any of y'all had already known this, but how did y'all respond when? You heard about the storyline that didn't get made about Vince and Oh, me and Dylan was talking about that earlier, man. Yeah, yeah we were right. talking about that. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah. What are Wait, we doing, Vince? Uh, Wait. Well, you know, it was two of them, right? There's, there's commitment I heard that in the story before the documentary movie. came out, and I was like, oh, hell no. Hell no. Right. <laughs> but it was two It was two of them. Yeah. When he said that story about his mother, I'm like, okay, that makes perfect sense. Why yeah. years yeah. later that shit was in his head? Cause mm-hmm. man, that had to be some psychological shit going on when he was a kid for him to even come up with the yeah. idea of being his daughter's baby daddy. And he was like, "Well, right. you know, that's unfortunate. That story didn't come out. Was it wasn't made? I'm like, sick ass mother." <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's another one. The other, the flip part of that was Shane was supposed to be the father of Stephanie. They were supposed to have a romantic relationship mm-hmm. because they were too close. What are you even doing, Vince? Like this commitment, and it is whatever he was doing during that period. <laughs> like, I don't know <laughs> what the hell was going. It was the roids. That that was the Somebody, fucking way with the roids. <laughs> Somebody in that camp was like, "Listen, I normally would be a yes man, but sir, no, I can't. Man, this is gonna destroy not- everything." <laughs> like, no, that no one's not gonna like that, sir. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, all right, it was worth a shot, you know. <laughs> um so let's let's move to when Owen Hart died in the ring mm. oh. and they mm. they kept the thing going now Vince's Vince's reasoning behind keeping the, the show going you know besides being a businessman and everything like that is it was dark and the crowd couldn't see what happened necessarily mm-hmm. uh Terrell, do, do you buy this Actually, I kind of do because I didn't know that. I thought that people saw it and was like, oh, shit. And Vince is like, you know, keep it going. We got to keep it going. If it was dark and they was able to, you know, when the lights came on, everyone was like, the hell happened? You know, why is he, why, you know, why is he laying there? So I, I kind of understand it. I, it was crazy when he said no one came to see, you know, Someone died. They came to see a show. I was like, "Ah, oh, damn! You could have said that a little bit different." But, but, 
Yeah. I get yeah. It. The lights were off. No one saw what happened. Because even he said it like, if the lights are on and people saw it, we have to end it. You know? Yeah. yeah. But even he was like, if I if that happened to me, I would still want the show to go on. So it's just mm-hmm. he was in that business, that business mindset that's always that pretty much relates into life sometimes. Like what he's saying is true, even in death, you know, life still has to show be going. my so, yep. Yeah, so I understood what he was saying. It was just sad that, you know, the wrestlers that had to follow that seeing mm-hmm. that blood stain on the mat. Yeah, it's like they, they man, that how can you there. focus? Yeah, like, so like, I, and then you I, could I you could see them looking at it during the matches. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Like, especially I'm, Undertaker, I'm he was is, looking at it like, oh shit, you know, like I'm guessing this is why they have yeah. so many ring aprons now, and like yeah. every this is why every match they're changing that damn ring apron. Yeah, because man, they didn't they they didn't have, they didn't have no one to clean it. They just picked them up, put them in the gurney. Mm-hmm. Sent him on his way, and that right there is pretty much the clearest photo I've I've seen since. This is like the first time when I saw that documentary. I'm like, damn, that's the clearest photo I've seen because usually it's not shown, or when they do that, try not don't do this at home. Uh, little segments, it was in black and white kind of, so you didn't really, you know, see. So in this documentary, it's like, wow, it's just. You know, dude died on impact, it's just, and it's it's it was a crazy yeah, situation. Yeah. I'm glad no one saw it, to be honest, right? With you, because that would have been traumatic. Like yeah. it was dark. They're watching Titan Tron on the pre-recorded interview, and like you know that happened, and you can't see it. That's that's, and you wake, and the lights come back on. And you see him just laying there. It's like mm-hmm. I would have been like, "Whoa, what the hell happened?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you see it the same way? Um, I unfortunately I do. I definitely do see it the same way because I mean, you gotta think about it. Those wrestlers were getting paid, you know, around that time per show. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So the show has to go on. I've even heard like Vince is just brutally blunt, you know, and it might come out as him being a, a dick, but it's just him being truthful. He can't sugarcoat nothing. Mm-hmm. He literally cannot sugarcoat anything if you pay attention to the whole documentary series. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's very, very, very sad. You know, I've followed that story so many times. Like, I read about it in um, one of the books. I, I don't know if it was the Stone Cold book or the... Uh, uh, the uh, Undertaker book, somebody book I read when I was younger, and I just started like doing more research in it because, like I said, I aspire to be a wrestler myself one day. Okay. And, um, it's just, bro, they they shouldn't have. I don't know if any wrestlers actually saw it, but they shouldn't. Like honestly, I couldn't do it. I yeah. wouldn't be able to wrestle. That that's somebody I'm on the road with twenty four seven. That's like my best friend, you know. Yes. No. Nah. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Um, Will, um, were you watching wrestling at that time or um, was this story um, a new to you? Oh, me, you stepped out. Oh, yeah, okay. me, you stepped out. All right. Um, so let's, uh, let's move along then. Um, with, with wrestling being so popular now, um, just being like taken over. Do you think this Mr. McMahon documentary will hurt wrestling at all? Um, with with the the, the diff- different things that came out into it, what's your, what's your thoughts on that, Drew? No, I don't think um, it hurts anything because mostly the main focal point of, the, of those uh, documentary was about the steroids and all this stuff and. That was going on for years against the, the WWE, and it, it intensified after the death of Chris Benoit. WWE was back under fire for you know steroids and all that stuff. So this documentary, I don't believe it hurts him at all because it was most the, the bulk of this documentary was made before any of those allegations came out. 
So this is something that probably won't be used against him in court. Um, but as far as hurting the business, no, I don't think it it does because nowadays there's precautions now taking place in WWE to prevent stuff like this. Uh, certain moves are not done anymore. They don't do chair shots like that anymore. Um, if there's a sign of a concussion, they have a concussion protocol. Um, they give wrestlers time off if you know they got an injury they're trying to take care of. Because you know, back in the day, you don't you don't wrestle, you don't get paid, and you're out of money. Exactly. Now these guys, these guys and girls are having guaranteed contracts. So mm-hmm. if they need to take some time off. They can take that time off and, you know, they still get paid. And, they, you know, the sick, that sick time can be added to their contract or something when it's up or whatever. So they're better off now than what it was. So this documentary, I don't see it harming WWE at all. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Um, so let's uh, let's wrap this thing up. Then let's, let's give some, um, I guess, final thoughts about the – the ending of the documentary where we start mm-hmm. seeing all of the the sexual allegations come up um, that Mr. Man wasn't present for because uh, after allegations were made public, he stopped doing the interviews. Um, so with the, with the stuff that they said earlier, I guess, in the documentary and the new stuff that, that came to light, um, the Brock Lesnar name getting brought up, um all those different things where do you think this this um this criminal case actually goes to um in the future here uh will what, what do you think about the the the, the case uh against mr big man well i think we were having a conversation yesterday and i told you when when he was doing that interview or what was it like costas when he got up in his face whoever it was that he kept leaning up in that chair get that's a man who will do. That's a man who will do everything he's been accused of. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when I saw that, I was like, "Yeah, he he probably did all of that." Um, mm-hmm. I just don't think you get to that level of dom. Like, cause think about it, he wasn't just about the break. He dominated everything he did, and if he wasn't mm-hmm. dominating, he figured out a way to then make them join him and then dominated them. <laughs> like, like that's yeah. how he moves. He dominates and. So with that comes, yeah, the the power over people and the power over very beautiful women. And, yeah, I I assume he probably did all that shit. And you know what? No, it's terrible. Obviously bad. But I'm pretty (laughs) sure all of them did what they did for their job. And and they got they moved up every time. So, you know, they made choices, too. Um, It's unfortunate, though, like when you get your jobs on the line and you got to do some slimy shit like that. But yeah, absolutely. Um, Terrell, what's your uh, what's your thoughts on the the actual uh, criminal case uh, against Mr. McMahon? Oh man, um, I hope because uh, from what I was the last time I heard, his health was in, was in the bad was in bad shape, and that always happens when when these guys go to trial, like Harvey Weinstein when he was. Um, on trial and stuff, his health was deteriorating. So it's like all of a sudden these things are happening at an elder age. And it's like, do do people really get, if this stuff really happened, it sucks because do people really get their justice? Because they're just going to, they're probably going to die either in prison without barely doing any time or Lord forbid, you know, they they pass before, you know, the trial is even up. So I do see this going forward, and I don't think he he's going to be able to buy his way out of this one. I think um, if all of this stuff gets dropped or he gets found not guilty, that would be the biggest, I would say the biggest win ever in life for him, more mm-hmm. than the Hulk Hogan uh, steroid thing back in the day. Um, but – if he did all this, he deserves to go to prison because um, that one wrestler, Ashley Mazzaro, she committed suicide because no one, yeah. nobody believed her. 
Yes. Two, That's no terrible. one even cares. Mm-hmm. And three, if he was involved in that, I mean, you did what you did and you left her there in a third world country. Yeah, man. To have That's her find a way insane. home. It's like someone yeah. has to answer for that, you know? Yeah. That's oh, no, scary. no, not someone. Very specifically him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if other people were involved, they got to answer for that, too. You know, if, if you know, yeah. Yeah. Laura yeah. Nice was involved yeah. in that, he got to answer for that. So it's like. Absolutely. And you mentioned Brock. I don't think anything's going to come at it because he would just mention in the text. He, he didn't officially meet the woman. He never came close to the woman, nowhere near the woman. So, like I mentioned Allegedly. the other day. He, yeah. And so. The rumor has that he's already, you know, back on the active roster. So um, it was just to the, he was gone just to take the heat off of him. Because it was if he showed up when that story was going out, that it would have been a bad look. So yeah. send him home, enjoy the rest of the year, come back another year or two. But I think him, I think he's he should be good. As far as that goes, because if he was just in a text, then you know it was just a text message. You know, it's not you yeah. can't really cancel him if he didn't really do anything. You know, that's between yeah. him and his wife. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, assume, yeah. I assume ex-wife now. Nah, Sable not Sable not about to divorce Brock Lesnar. Sable is not about to leave Brock Lesnar. Well, I'm forgot sorry. He's with Sable. I forgot. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. You know. I'm sorry. I, I, he got the ironically, for the league, huh? Look at look at Brock. <laughs> hey, but ironically, the same person that sued WWE for sexual assault as well. Yeah, yeah. So but she came so back though. She came back because she probably knew she couldn't win. But think about no, this. Or did she settle? Yeah, she settled. Yeah. They, they oh, settled. yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it is, they settled. They sure did because they settled, mentioned it. Which is crazy that he then brought her back in. Vince is good for that, though. That, like, yeah. He's, <laughs> always, he's, he's, always, he's always had that, that mindset, you know, what's best for business, you know, that yeah. whole yeah. best for yeah. business yeah. mantra. It's not, like, it's like, it's not hey, personal. It's business. If we can come to a common ground here, I'm open for anything. So it's like, that still happens to this day, you know. CM yep. Punk and WWE, Triple H is like, hey, <laughs> The door is always open never. for you. You know, the door is always open. So, and he came back. So, it's, I like that mindset they have. It's like, hey, you know, make me money. Yep. That, that's all I care about. Just, just make me money. I, mm-hmm. make it's, me rich. It's, I think it's crazy with so many interpersonal relationships that he has in that business. He had, like, every guy they brought in was like, he's a father figure, all this stuff. And yet, mm-hmm. he, was, he was still very, like, very easily managed to never like mix the business with his feelings he's like nah whatever like i don't it's not about it's not personal ever it's always just about this business that's a crazy I mean, amount of commitment i mean have you met vincent kennedy mcmahon senior like have you heard about him so i mean uh, yeah if, if it's if your father show you show you a whip and you learning this as a as a teenager or whatever you learn everything from your father being just soaking it up mm-hmm. you're gonna be the same way yeah. You know, then he already had a disconnect because he wasn't there early on. You know, yeah, you got to right. think about yeah, 12. Ex- exactly. And then it's you got the stepfather and then your mother sexually abusing you. So it's like he's already withdrawn from people. That's why I like what I, I kind of felt what he said. I show you what I want to show you. Mm-hmm. But everything's a work. I mean, yeah. Wait, now why, why is Bruce Pritchard upsetting you? Like, what, what's what's going on? What, what, what did Bruce Pritchard say? Um, I I I liked Bruce Pritchard's re- rebuttal pretty much. Um, yeah. For you know, he's trying to take up for Vince McMahon. You know, because he's been working with him forever. Um, yeah, but, 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 but he'll, he'll defend I, him to the end. I, I will know. say this though. I will say this though. I feel like that document. I mean, that documentary. It was set up. To bring Vince down, like yeah. I'm gonna be real with you, it was set up was. to bring Vince down because if this was something solely about Vince's life and Vince McMahon, the person in 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 the um the wrestler, then you would have never bought in sexual allegations. You would never I talk mean, about this so much. It, it was I mean, it's part of it, part of it yeah. but come on now, 
if you if you're talking about um god bless god bless the dead p p rose you know what i'm saying you're gonna talk more about his life and his upcoming and the things he had to go through you're not just gonna focus on they every single it seemed like after they did the uh steroid thing everything was was brought up to attack vince and they keep yeah. bringing it up they had way mm -hmm. more stuff that vince had done mm -hmm. in his life yeah. But you don't get because, to separate like you don't really get to separate the things. It's all one person. So the good end, yeah, the, it, you got to deal. They're with gonna it. talk about the good and the bad, right? Like yeah, Pete Rose. It I, it's funny. It's funny you chose Pete Rose because like the first, the first thing on his byline is always going to be that he gambled yeah. on baseball. It's yes. the very first yeah. thing they speak of. Before yeah. we talk about don't... how much he hustled and how great he was, it's like yeah, but he cheated the game and and the underage girls yeah. too. Ugh. Yeah. Someone's gonna dig that up. Somebody's gonna dig that up. <laughs> but I will say, I will say, they did a good job investigating him. But it, it was set up, it was set up to take him down because it it don't show enough about Vince McMahon, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it was it was a lot about WWE his creation and his involvement with it and his on screen character. What's right. the name? What's the name of the documentary? It isn't yeah, Mr. McMahon. McMahon. It's Mr. Yeah. McMahon, his character. True. So that is true. That is true. Mm -hmm. So true. when do you separate Mr. McMahon? Because Mr. McMahon don't have yeah. these allegations against him. Vincent yeah, Kennedy McMahon was... has these allegations. <laughs> so right. So 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 to your point, when they wanted to separate them, they did, but yeah. not the entire time. So they made. Yeah, you're right. It, it was definitely somewhat of a hit piece. And as for uh, my man who was talking about uh, Pritchard, when you're doing a documentary, you have to have the opposition. Otherwise, you just look like you're entirely a hit piece. Yeah. Or you're entirely. Mm -hmm. So they had to put Pritchard on there, always defending Vince, because that's the voice of that other side. You got to have the other side. Yep. So do you think it was balanced? Right. Otherwise, I, oh, this is all one way. This is all one-sided. So you got to put both in. I think it was, think it was balanced balance. enough because I think we was expecting more, but I kept forgetting that this was all before the allegations of made public. Yeah. Right. If 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 mm -hmm. if this was after, this would be a totally different story because this documentary was already in the works or being talked about before we even call wind of you know the lawsuit. So, I, it well, would have been it just this about Doctor Mary would probably would have been the same, with the exception of adding in the whole allegation stuff. So I think this document still would have been the same. So let me ask this question to y'all. From what I gather, the allegations that's being brought up now are the same allegations that was then by the same young lady. Okay. Like, pay attention to it. Like. They saying the same thing, and it's the same young lady. Like something had to change though, because now trafficking is involved. Right? Yeah. So something different had to happen. What? You yeah, know why trafficking is involved? Okay. Because you got your oh. ditties out here. <laughs> well, you yeah, know, so, that's the way you so, bury him now. Because sexual harassment doesn't take you out anymore like it used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I I know the trafficking is gonna be old, so he passed her to um to uh What's what's Larry 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 Nitus? Yeah. Larry Nitus, Johnny Larry Larry Nitus. Nitus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, people don't realize like after there was a case in New York in I think the 60s or 70s that was <laughs> it, it forever changed how trafficking is now viewed. Now, if you date a girl or if you uh, at a bar, like all three of us, all four of us at a bar, or whatever. And I literally tell you, like, hey yo, you should go holler at Shorty. You holler at Shorty, you bag, you do whatever. If you text me the next morning and your good looks on that, I traffic. That's how the rule works now. Yeah. God damn, so, for real? Yeah, it's right. Yeah. Careful, fellas. Yeah. Yeah. Careful, fellas, is what I'm saying. <laughs> just careful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> damn. Don't take you text. Just be like, all right, just what, what's understood. <laughs> yeah. need to be it was a good night. Man. It was a good night, man. It was a good night. Text me, know, the, text like me the emoji yeah. fist or something. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, I know. Just the 100. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, send me that yeah. 100. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So, um, let's do let's do some final thoughts on the uh, on the documentary. Let's start with uh, with Terrell. Um, overall, I liked the documentary. Uh, I thought it was um, 
I would say 50, 75% of it already knew, given, you know, following the story for years. There were some few things that, okay, I understand them. And there's some things I can relate to as far as, like, the father thing. So I actually, I it was a good watch. It was a good um, listen to. Uh, once I saw the first episode, it was hard not to watch the next one. Um, so I, I, I give it, a, I give it a solid, um, I give it a solid eight out of ten. Mm-hmm. All right, Jay, what, what's your thoughts? I mean, I, I'm gonna agree with that too. I'll give it a, a, a eight out of ten. You know, I, I was watching it. Uh, I, I sent it to y'all. We wanted to talk about it last week. Okay. So it was hard for me not to continue watch. I watched the first three episodes and I was like, damn. <laughs> I just gotta go back for more. Well, here goes my but the re- <laughs> <laughs> Right. But the reason why, you know, I give it an eight out of ten is because there are so much more things they could have asked about. Especially if you yeah. wanna if you wanna break into the uh sex trafficking and the allegations. But keep in mind, keep in what, mind. What happened? Uh, Jay, that was before then. That was before then. Yeah. Before nah, then. they still brought up some, some, um, well, not the sex trafficking, but, you know, the sexual harassment cases, like with Sable oh. and stuff. What you about, what about the flight? What about the flight from hell? You know what I'm saying? You could have, you could have brought up so many other things and it got Vince's point of view from it. Mm-hmm. Because I heard yeah. that Vince was on that plane. He was. Oh, really? Yes. yes he was. He was. So it's like they, that's why I said it strategically was to take down Vince because of it was directed but, at Vince. Well, remember, he did say, oh, there's some stories I can tell, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did. He left a lot. Those are one of them stories. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like they didn't ask him. I'm going to be real. It, it because took a lot of the story, report, he, even the guy was like, you know, what story? He's like, I'm not telling you. <laughs> it, 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 it could right. be on the cutting room like, floor yeah. too. We never, we never yeah. know what's in the cut, one on the cutting room floor of of yeah. editing. So you never know. I'm um, surprised, right, but crazy for him to even say that type of thing. Like, oh, I'm not going to tell you that. Like, I would have been like, yeah. nah, I'm, I'm telling you everything. You know, uh, this yeah. is this is the tell all. But he was like, no, mm-hmm. there's mad shit that I'm not telling you guys because he crazy. knows. You know, and I was mad. I was mad about that too because of the fact, man, you about to be on your deathbed, probably. Like just, just being real, you about to be on your deathbed. Put some of that juicy tea out there, man. You ain't with the company no more. You know what I'm saying? Put some of that juicy tea out there because we all know what happened. You know what I'm saying? You can't take die and take grave, all man. the good stories with you. Take it to the grave, man. Cause, I mean, because I'm saying conspiracy moment with Will, right quick. I think mm-hmm. He's saving those stories. I think he's saving those stories for uh, either a book or you know he'll play them out and he'll have some. He'll he'll whisper somebody's ear and they'll play them out in WWE. He, like he's still probably, probably. Look, they, they, there's no way I know that he can't be connected to the company anymore at all. He's done. But there's yeah. no way you could be up in that office, mm-hmm. like cooking up ideas and not just shoot him a text like, "Yo, what you think about this?" Like, what you like? Because he's a brilliant <laughs> man. It's his business. Right. It's his business. So like. No one knows you better than him. Um, yeah, I feel like he'll still mm-hmm. be. Uh, maybe he saved those stories for that. We'll see, though. Right. I mean, it's, I, I'm the comment I seen. I just want to touch on it. Yeah, we know it's nothing new because majority of stuff we already knew. Like we didn't know that he was molested. Well, I know I didn't know he was molested as a yeah, child. Yeah, he grew know. up in the trailer park I and did, stuff. But so I it was the other way around. Oh. I okay. also say his behavior says something happened to him as a child. His behavior in general is like yeah, right, this right. Childhood must not have been great. He he gives he gives a uh, mental case. I'm gonna be real. He just, he gives mental case because even how he I could switch into that persona like that. Yeah, I'm surprised he kept it on the lid for so long. Like there was always allegations and stuff like that, but for the length of the run he had and the mm-hmm. type of person he is, I feel like he should have been so many more things. That, that should have got uh, exposed, but he just yeah. But he he made friends with the right people. Yeah, notice and then they he made said them. they mentioned exactly they mentioned Donald Trump in that in that documentary for a reason. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Decades. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's decades, man. yeah he, he said some of it was him. Yeah. He said, I think the favorite line that I that that I had from that though was he was saying, um, it basically started to blur the line between Vince and Mr. McMahon. And and then he was like, I'm definitely a version of one of them, 
and one of them is more exaggerated. I don't know which one it is though. So he yeah, that messed that messed me up. Yeah, he, yeah. he even lost track of where he was going mentally. So yeah, things like that are gonna happen, man. <laughs> so he basically, you know what that was? Yeah, I did it. That's why he's short. <laughs> yeah, I did it. <laughs> I physically did it, but it was the other guy. It was the mm-hmm. guy who lives in here. Yeah, yeah. he's an asshole. That- but that's ba- this is gonna always forever be known to me as the OJ Simpson case in wrestling. Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, my, my, that, my, my final thoughts on the whole situation was mm-hmm. if I personally feel like it didn't start out to be a hit piece. I feel no, like right. upon, I feel like if you see the first the first episode, the second episode, third episode, I'm like, I right, like they really I didn't come away from them first three episodes feeling like, oh, they're shitting on Vince. No, I came away like, yo, Vince is a dog. Like, he really <laughs> did all this. So so if their plan was to hit, to, to do a hit piece on Vince from the beginning, they dropped the ball because it didn't feel like that through most of it. It didn't feel like that till about five. Fifth mm-hmm. episode or sixth episode, I feel like, and I feel like by then they had done enough research, had enough conversation with him to be like, oh, he might not be a good dude at all. We should probably... Like we, saw him. A bad dude. We, saw, we already saw he was a bad dude in business. Maybe we need to look into how bad of a dude he was just as a person. And I think, mm-hmm. it, and then he had to leave. He, he wouldn't do the rest of it because of what was coming out. And they were just mm-hmm. like, "All right, yeah, he's a dick. Let's just go." And just they, they hit send on all the negative shit in the last two episodes. I feel like. And not not to mention, not to mention, it's a it's a, a docu series, so you have to keep people entertained. Absolutely. So. If you just come out with the allegations just straight up, it's you know, it, it's not gonna grab people attention, especially the pure wrestling fans' attention. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of feel like it didn't start out that way, but at the same time, look at how everything was edited too. Because they were jumping around. Like the first three episodes, they were kind of like jumping around, and then they had to re re-put it in the next episode. Like it's yeah. Also, also to your point, which I, I agree with you, uh, the the one thing that did seem a little eerie from the very beginning was the vibe of when like they showed everybody. They always do this in documentaries when they're doing the face to face interviews. They show them mm-hmm. come in and sit down, and like they, oh, you, you get the vibe of in the room. The vibe in every room when someone sat down was like, we got to do this. Oh shit! Yeah, nobody wanted to be. Um, there. That was the vibe. I hope they don't ask you the tough questions. You know? Yeah, I'm, cause I'm, I'm, gonna be, I'm not going to say nothing to him. I'll lose my job, so I, I don't even know why we're doing this. Like, I can't tell him the truth. <laughs> but to be honest with you, that Hulk Hogan, the Hulk Hogan stuff, yeah. it's old. That's that oh, comes yeah, from yeah. another. Yeah. That comes from another I mean, another documentary. Said, yeah, mm-hmm. they could have said so much more about Hogan too. His shit. Mm-hmm. He had a bunch of shit that had that we had to deal with later on. I, I, I mean, I was it, was, it wasn't about Hogan. I was actually surprised, <laughs> surprised how Hogan handled that uh, that testify because I didn't know that part where like, he told him what they wanted to hear without sudden Vince out. So, and it was still the truth. Like he Vince didn't give him the steroids. He didn't say, yeah. "Hey, I need you to get Jack use the steroids." His more of, "I know you're using it, but I ain't gonna do shit about it because you know mm-hmm. I didn't give it to you." So, but not, he told but not the truth without he told the truth without yeah. making up a lie to send Vince to jail. So I, I like how he did that. And it wasn't even just I mean, that because also he told them like he, it's not that he had to tell them oh do this or don't do this. It's just that everyone who's successful is on the juice. So that's a clear yep. message from the top without even saying a word. The only people mm-hmm. we push forward are built like Adonis. So like yep. <laughs> obviously that's a message that he's sending to everybody. Mm-hmm. Right. Man, it's crazy. Crazy it's documentary. Man, it's Eight out of ten, Yeah. Okay. It would have mm-hmm. been a nine if they got to actually finish those last two episodes, like correct. Yeah, that that, that yeah. would have been great. If they yeah, it would probably put a better ten out of ten in court for sure. They would have used that in court. Also, mm-hmm. did Vince? Why did Vince do this? Is what I want to know. Why did he do it? Because uh, did he think it wasn't going to be a hit? Did he think it was going to be like all hunky dory? The shit they're talking about is. Why? I think I mean he didn't mind. He didn't mind the stories, you know, Mm -hmm. talking about this and this and that. Um, because like I was saying earlier, it was already in production, it was already being talked about before all this stuff came out. So if it never would have came out, Netflix still would have did this did this piece. Mm -hmm. Um Mm -hmm. 
and they would have did it their way because I guess I don't know they didn't trust Vince to okay do it his way. So they was like, you know, what, we're gonna do it our way regardless. So I think it still so, would have so him being involved his best way to keep them from going crazy hit piece. Yeah, that checks out. Yeah, actually. yeah. I mean, I, mean, I oh no, we lost him. Uh, we can answer this question before he comes back. Uh, if Vince mm-hmm. and his family weren't close with Trump, do you think the media is coming um, for him this hard with this hit piece? Um, yeah, yeah, because he's such a. It's always fuck huh? you from Vince. Like, to, yeah. Um, yeah. But I that, think. Oh my bad. Go ahead. My yeah. bad. Will. I think because of he's always been so like. It's similar to Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds, there was no one left to help Barry Bonds when he needed people to speak up for him on his behalf because he told everybody in the media to go fuck themselves for like 20 seasons. So like yeah. there was no way when it when, when the shit hit the fan that they were gonna cover him in a in a in a good light. And that's kind of what happens with Vince. You're not gonna get covered in a good light if you step on everyone on the way up there. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think it was a a, a um a par for to to set up WWE move it to Netflix. You know, because because they've been trying to do this Netflix deal. They've been trying to corner the market. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, they couldn't do it because of the allegations. That's a good point. You know what? I, this whole thing they probably just did to be like, see this guy who ran this thing that we now own? He's not involved mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because they, they, made, they didn't say it, but they put the words on the screen. They put the words on the screen, letting you know, and they said it. They say he stepped down twice, so they let you know. Mm-hmm. Well, he stepped about. down. He stepped he down the gone. first time. The second time, he was re- he he was forced. Yeah, he was, to, he was out to be removed. Yeah, he was, it, was, it was pretty much a done data. He thought by getting TKO, he was still assume control, and it's like, nah, TKO. If Dana White doesn't have full control like that, what makes you think? Well, well, Vince thought he was gonna have that full control, and he knew he was gonna have that that full control. Whatever TKO said, that's what was gonna happen. So it that, that was that was a good part of the deal. The yeah, it backfired on him. It backfired on him because yeah. he thought he should have known. You know, he should have known. known once. He should have known once he wasn't the one with the fifty-one percent mm. of the company that things were gonna be different. That that's the now, whole I, thing. I, no matter what he did before, he always had fifty-one percent or more. And I think mm-hmm. he he thought he thought it was over because he had he had like settled these the this this last round gave the people the money or whatever he thought that was it. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He yeah, thought man. he was gonna buy his way back in. He's like, up, oh, I'm back. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, not so fast. <laughs> <laughs> right, Deuces. <laughs> He's a legend, though, man. Like, I, oh, yeah. I, 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 we, we, we as fans, we as fans are always gonna separate. Like all that negative shit from all the joy he gave us. I will yeah. say that um I will say that the documentary, if you came into the documentary of Vince fan or a wrestling fan, you left the same way. Yep. Yeah, like this, this wasn't gonna change anything for us. Cause honestly, I don't think any of the things that he's being accused of, if we found out for sure he did them tomorrow, we'd be like, yeah, it checks out. Like it wouldn't yeah. shock yeah. any of us. Right. Yeah. Right. But, I'm, I'm, yeah. but I'm gonna be real with you. He did. Yeah. <laughs> he exactly. did. I think he did so, all that shit. In the fact that he played it on screen, that was just him, you know, CYA. You know? Yeah. He was Freudian slipping. He was screaming for help. Look, I'm a I'm a monster. This is but now I'm just gonna <laughs> turn it into a character because that's the only way I know how to do is to make money out of everything. Cause even Ted yeah. Turner, I think Ted Turner knew something too. Cause he was like, you know, the reason why Vince sell because he showed more of the tick. Mm. You know? Never so, have I been more certain that two men have probably buried a hooker in the desert somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Both of them do. All right. Wild. Well, fellas, this was a um, a great uh, discussion to mm-hmm. uh, review the docu docu series from Netflix, Mister McMahon. Uh, appreciate you guys uh, joining us. We appreciate all of the comments, uh, everybody out there that that chimed in. Uh, we appreciate you guys. We'll be back next week. We're going to talk more wrestling. So, <laughs> Kenny Omega, take us home. Thank you, too. Goodbye. Mwah. Good night. Bang! Yes! Thanks for watching our show.
Remember to subscribe for more shows on the network. Smash the like button, share, and comment.